PMX uh, session. And uh, Vitasys will continue to show you in practice how to use the application and how it can be helpful for you. So, thanks, Vitas. Uh, thanks, Arson. Uh, right, uh, so let me share the screen and the uh, Uh, again, a little uh, explanation of what I will try to show to you. <clears throat> the idea is uh, to hands-on tutorial, uh, which is uh, quite uh, high level, so quite abstracted, so quite uh, use it uh, in, in the production runs, but I also want to uh, show uh, internals of the uh, what's happening, what is Gromax doing in the steps, what is PMX doing, and to, to give you a feeling uh, of uh, what this exactly is. Of course, uh, when running the, uh, the uh, PMX uh, tasks or, 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 or Gromax uh, or in, uh, interacting with them, you may, may have questions and might be some issues sometimes of, of course this is an open source uh yeah academically developed software so uh, if you have any questions you can uh, go to the uh, i hope you see my screen now uh, uh, which uh, is ask by excel eu and uh, uh, here all the that are supported by uh, by 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 excel have their own um yeah it's like a for forum based uh, sections uh Hardock, also pmx is there so on PMX, I will <clears throat> then uh, uh, try to solve the problems uh, as well. Yeah, and the, and the where where we host our PMX is <coughs> is is here. I wrote it here on GitHub in the crowd in the PMX. So if you <coughs> if you navigate there, you can download PMX. Now, uh, if you really uh, have your hands-on experience uh, right away. So uh, in tandem, doing uh, all these steps, but I see that this uh, <clears throat> this workshop is not so, it's quite large that there are so uh, many participants, it's uh, difficult to get everyone. So what I suggest is that I, I will uh, uh, show each and every step. So I will not uh, skip steps, I will not, uh, let's say wait for everyone to to follow so if you have a question of course just free to ask we can <coughs> try to get an interactive uh, interactive session but uh, but otherwise i will just continue with this tutorial ah, thanks. Mm -hmm. right and now how pmx is that we have several branches is it is there uh, by default uh, the the uh, yeah the first branch that you will clone but but uh, the master branch is still a little uh, in the in the older python version in the python 2 uh, we also develop pmx the development developed branch and it is a python 3 based version and that's where also the tutorial is from which i will uh, which i will base everything so if you go to the, yeah, I just went to the develop branch, there is a tutorial section. And in this tutorial section, I also paste a install. It is a very brief installation uh, <clears throat> with which you can simply, it, it really goes from the very beginning where you create environment. I have already that, so I, uh, just to save a little bit of time and uh, spend time on something more interesting. So to show what's exactly, I will not create this button. You can, in principle, just create your con environment. So you go to your, let me just show you. Let's say we, we are somewhere. Uh, we simply create con the environment with the desired name. We activate this environment. I already created it. So already at this step where I activate the environment, I think I called it test trace or so, where I wanted to test. Yeah, I activated it. And then there are several packages that you would need to install. There are just standard NumPy, Matplotlib, then one more package R for handling molecular structures and uh, uh, chemoinformatic uh, tools in there. 
And then finally, we go to git clone PMX. Download PMX. Let's say we do it, right? We download PMX. That is the uh, folder structure. We enter it in this folder and we check out the development branch. That's important, right? That we are, uh, if I do this, git checkout, git branch, it shows me I'm in the de development branch. Okay, that's it. We have, we install it. Pip install installs as PMX, right? And I installed it. I'm done. I'm running these commands right now because I, I prepared just 10 minutes ago while preparing for this tutorial. All right, and then we just go, let's go. So this is where our tutorial files that I prepared are. And let's launch our Jupyter Notebook. I hope you are familiar with how, how those work. If not, you, you can just follow what I'm doing, right? Jupyter Notebook. This will open uh, in, in, the, your, in your browser, will open the tutorial, which we can now follow, right? Okay, let, tutorial. let me briefly describe what we'll be doing in this tutorial. And let me describe, uh, well, and then, and then we'll go one by step. Firstly, we just import some modules. All the modules that, <coughs> that are used are in this class is tutorial. You can go to this as a tutorial and check what it is. There's nothing, no magic class that contains all the parameters that uh, uh, that this tutorial is setting. So how many replicas we'll run, how many we will want, and so on and so on. I'll go, uh, uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more in detail later. And you see that just a standard Python class, no need to, you can always just go there, extract what you want from it. Okay. So let me introduce what we are going to do. Uh, in the lecture, uh, I uh, a little bit on the uh, topic of ligand protein interactions. And in this ligand protein interactions, we have many uh, were uh, interested in modifying the ligand. So making a small modification on this, let's say in this example, it's not exactly the same that we're using this picture where we change in this benzamidine, we attach methyl group in once in water, once protein interacting with the lipid, and try to estimate what is the free energy difference of adding this methyl group in uh, the protein and in the ligand and in, and in water. And this delta delta G is very informative because it tells whether this modified stronger or weak with respect to the <coughs> original uh, Pro, uh, original ligand, unmodified one. We will take one case paper that uh, I'm, I'm highlight. Um, uh, from this paper, all the inputs are already on our PMX GitHub web page, from which you can download our all this, and you can <clears throat> from there start uh, these calculations that I will show later and calculate the free energy difference. Uh, experimental. Uh, so these will be two ligands, one one code name and another code name, just two ligands. We'll have a look how they look in a second. And we now experimentally measured three code name. It is about three kilojoules per mole for one or another. And then we can compare whether we got the correct similar answer in a way. Okay, let's look at the ligands now. So I prepared some input for this tutorial directly coming from uh, this uh, paper that I just uh, so ligands, the two ligands are organized as follows, one ligand and another, just the code names. Let's have a look at one of them. Yeah. So there is an ITP file, B, and another ITP. So let's start with the PDB. This is a structure file. That's how Gromach stores structures of uh, uh, other formats, but this is just a text file with the coordinates and atom name. Let's have a look how it looks. Pure, it's a ligand, all right? A ligand which we will want to morph into another ligand. 
let's load also another ligand. Here is another ligand. So we have the two of them. They are very similar. <coughs> Small difference. Where is the difference? Well, the difference is that the chlorine atom here, all of a sudden it jumps to another position. It jumps to a different position in another ligand. And this change, we will try to capture in the differences in our free energy difference calculations. You can see that there is a, uh, some uh, sphere blob on top of and This is uh, just for those of you who are interested in molecular mechanics force fields. Uh, and uh, this is a so-called sigma chlorine. Actually, it's not just chlorine. It actually has also a small positive. So it's, it has a chlorine has a cl chloride atom. Uh, sorry, chloride has a um, uh, uh, high partial negative charge, but it has also a positive uh, charge area, so-called sigma hole on top of it, or yeah, uh, in the plane uh, of the benzene uh, along this axis, and this is represented by a virtual part. This is a very detailed, just for you to be confused why there is a, another blob on top of uh, fluoride. Okay, so, and we also have, ah, sorry, so you have topology, not to forget it. That's how Chromox topology looks like. You don't need to learn it or anything, just to understand what these files, because yeah, th this is a lot of everyday life, uh, looking at those files, trying to understand where the errors come from. Uh, uh, so we a molecule definition, this is a molecule, our ligand, and all the atoms are described in it. So atom one will be carbon type C3, given charge and mass and all of the atoms. Later, we'll go further, we'll find that bonds. First carbon is bond to the second carbon with uh, force const uh, with this, uh, at this distance with this force constant. Then we have pairs, we have angles, angles are um, how the hydrals and some virtual sites for this uh, virtual particle. Okay, so this is very simple. We also have FS more. Simply, I like to separate them uh, atom types in a separate in separate file. Uh, no, nothing special. Okay. So these were ligands and proteins. Proteins are in amber format in this case. Again, this is our protein. I forgot what protein it is. It is. Uh, that's why I'm looking into into the tutorial. Here is J and K one kinase. You notice that this is just a plain protein. I didn't even add a ligand inside. Ligand will be add incorporated later. While we, when we go through the, okay, this is yeah nothing nothing special to see. If you have seen a few proteins, this is just a regular kind. Okay, and uh, uh, again and, uh, topology files. You can see that Gromax has defined several topology files here. Again the same. Just this time for protein again, atoms defined. So bonds are defined and so on. Okay. So uh, the last part is MDP files. And I, I will go into them a little bit uh, later, but uh, they are pretty standard uh, MDP files and MDP are uh, um, dynamics parameter files, where we say what parameters for the simulations we'll use. And these are, so uh, don't need to go through all the functions, through, through all the parameter names here, but let's say we define the integrator, steepest descent selected for energy minimization, initial time step, uh, or some of them will not be used for the energy minimization, while uh, others will be for energy minimization tolerance, step size, and so on. Okay, so this, this is a very generic overview. Okay, and what we'll do, tutorial, we will generate the hybrid structure and topology for these two ligands and we'll start a non and we'll use non equation protocol i will do this so we will run uh, sorry i'm trying to enlarge a little bit the size okay what we will do we will set up the system in its 
wild type state. Let's say ligand bound to the protein, simulated for a long time. We will set up ligand bound to uh, mutated ligand bound to protein and simulate it in a long time. We'll extract and start the transition state to another in one direction and in another direction. From all of these transitions, we'll gather work values. We use Crookes flotation theorem to calculate delta G between the two states. We'll do this for two states, uh, for, for two uh, branches of the thermodynamics. Let me go back to the thermodynamics a little bit here. Once in water, once in ligand bound to the protein and recover delta delta G. Okay, let's, let's go first step. <clears throat> in the first step, we will uh, simply initialize this class. So it doesn't do anything alchemical. It doesn't do act, actually, uh, it doesn't do uh, anything related with simulations, just prepares uh, the parameters, prepares uh, the folder structure, uh, and tells where to find all these inputs. You remember I showed you inputs uh, for ligands. Let's say now it will, ligand path will be in the ligands, protein path will be in the input protein, MDP path in the in, in input MDP. So nothing special. Let's just run this and let's see what happened. I ran it and it told me that it found the work path somewhere. It found the MDP path, protein files, and so on. And it's following work, uh, folder structure. It's quite informative. Just look at the folder structure to understand what's happening, what will will be. So we have an edge and, and I'm calling the uh, simply uh, the uh, <coughs> two ligands that we are uh, considering delta delta g calculations x y means that we are interested in the free energy difference between ligand x and y it will have two sub branches one in water one in water and one in protein uh, ligand bound to the protein then there will be two states state a and b those going now to the figure again these these will correspond to the one state let's say wild type ligand and one ligand that's state so for each of the branches then we'll have three replicas it's always a good uh, idea to have to to run pull replicas because the uh, dynamics is a has a stochastic component to it every time when you repeat the simulation you will get a slightly different free energy value when you repeat it uh, so you can have a, an independent uh, estimate of the uncertainty of your calculation that's why we are running in this case three independent and for each of them, energy minimization, let's say equilibration with position restraints, equilibration, and then transitions. For the <coughs> sake of uh, this tutorial, we'll just run several of those uh, to, to make it go faster. But in principle, that's that would be the general logics of this. And what we what happened? Now I switched again to the terminal to show you what what happened under the hood. So let's path here it created this edge x y so in our case it's edge one eight six two five dash one about the the ligands right <clears throat> and the water and protein branches water and it has as i said state a state b okay state a state a has one two three replicas each of those has three folders em eq transitions they, they are all empty we haven't done anything we just prepared everything and also it created, I think, uh, one more folder that I haven't mentioned, this hybrid structure topology folder. We'll play some, uh, we will uh, structures and topologies. Okay, let's have a look next step. This so good, uh, so far so good. Let me know if you if you have any questions because you have also interact, but I understand that it may be difficult, but if something is really unclear, just, just interrupt me so that we can discuss. Uh, all right, next step is to establish a mapping between this, these two ligands. I'll just run the command <clears throat> and we'll discuss and I'll explain what this command does. Let's, it's performing at a mapping, it says. And it now finished. Here it's output, quite a bit of output. You can read that what it was doing, but uh, it's important to understand what uh, uh, not, not these writings, but Exactly happened here. So now in this hybrid structure topology, 
appear many files. You can investigate them. It's a, it, can, it can be quite informal. But let me show you what it did. So what this function did, it took two ligands. Mm, let me show. These two starting ligands, but if one of them is, uh, let's say, green is wild type, blue is mutant, and it asked. So now I do later. I want to make a calculation between the two of them. I need to establish which atom will map to which atom. This is, a, let's say, a here. This nitrogen has to correspond to a nitrogen in another molecule. It needs to. Uh, so the script that we just ran smart enough to understand that this this one that this oxygen later maps to another oxygen right um, it needs to um, yeah that this oxygen for example maps to this oxygen um, right it needs to establish a mapping between the two of them and those atoms that it uh, doesn't find a mapping for example here's a uh, chloride atom but on the other ligand, there is no chloride atom at this position. It's a hydrogen, right? It needs to also understand, ah, th these two atoms correspond one to another. Right? It all encode that information. And here, it, uh, in, then it uh, uh, finds all the atoms that map to one another. You can see these are slightly truncations of the same ligands. They are completely identical in that respect because it's simply removed from its from its internal loss atoms that uh, do correspond to one another. Okay, so far so good. But simply, the all all that it did, I'll, I'll show you a text file. It simply found a mapping between uh, a text file which uh, created the text file where it said atom is actually in ligand one is the same as atom two in ligand two. Atom 27 is the same as atom 27 uh, between the two ligands. Different numbers, just these two numbered so, so similarly. Right? But that's the only thing. We did. Okay. But that's very simple. So this is chemoinformatic parsing, the structures. Okay. Let's now deal with the topologies. This is a, a, a tricky part. Let's do now it will use this mapping that it, and will use the. Um, uh, uh, topology uh, topology information to build to build the topology. I'm running this command. It's something and it says creating hybrid structure topology. Okay, and it did exactly that. Let's see what it did. It took the topology that I showed you before <coughs> and merged them into one. Now it created the two live in one. Uh, that's that's exactly what we wanted. We want to have both ligand states, so one ligand wild type represented. Uh, let me try to explain uh, what what it means. Let's look at the nitrogen atom here, number. Uh, it is uh, this is the old topology entry for ligand one. It is nitrogen of type NB with a given zero point. A3 minus 0 A3 and mass. And now it added the second part. It says in state B, it will still be nitrogen of type NB, but slightly different charge. You can see that it is minus 0 A3 1 before it was minus 0 A3 2. So this means that when you perform a simulation and couple the two Hamiltonians with lambda, it will know that it can it needs to be this charge in state A, the different charge in state B. And this is all for all the atoms based on our atom mapping and our topologies. Some atoms you can notice are have become dummies. What does that mean? So those are exactly the atoms that are disappearing. So we have a uh, clone in state A, but we said, hey, it, it cannot be uh, the same chloride. It has to disappear from that position. That's why I'll, in the structure, just to remind you, A, it will be a dummy. Dummy is just an atom which still has a mass, but it doesn't interact with the system. So it's really from our, uh, uh, from our um, 
description of the system's uh, potential energy uh, function. It, it's just, and uh, in state B, we find another chloride, right? It's still, it is at a different position, but it's not state A, it's a Damien state A. And there are several other atoms that we call Damien there. Let me show you how it looks in the structure. Right. So now this is the structure, and you see it's a little funny because the pymol comes those dummies. It's a bit is confused what's happening here, uh, but uh, uh, I'll uh, still explain this. If I label now atoms by name. Um, here is our let's say uh, uh, this is our ligand A it has chlor chloride uh, the second ligand has D uh, should have chloride there so this is the structure that's representing both yeah the namings need to be amended like with these D values and so but in principle, now we have structures represent in one single PDB file. So chloride here and chloride here, they will be controlled which one is on and off by topology that I showed you before. And we will have, uh, uh, we can run the simulation with all this structure. Uh, yeah, with Chromax package. Okay, so we're almost there. So now just note. Uh, just wanted to remark that these commands mapping uh, and uh, and the topology generation was uh, created by PMX. Those were not Gromax commands, but PMX commands. So PMX minus H, you will see uh, commands we have. And this uh, was done. So I ran them now from this tutorial class, but you can run them by, by your own. Let's say type PMX atom mapping. And if you type minus H, it gives you all the functions. It would take one ligand, another ligand, try to establish a mapping between them. Or you can type uh, PMX, uh, once you establish the mapping, you can say ligand minus H, and it will uh, provide the two structures and topologies, build hybrid structure and topology. So again, you provide two structures and two topologies, and the mapping between them from the previous step, you get the hybrid topology. That's it. It's very uh, over two commands. That's it. You're... Let's return to the tutorial. Let's actually now prepare the actual simulations and go ahead from there because now we are almost. We're all do everything. We just need to what what do we always need? We need to solve the system. Add ions. Add uh, so add water. Add ions. Prepare during simulation. Usually this is done by, yeah, there are uh, uh, various, uh, I haven't assembled systems. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one step. Right? We need, to, we, we just had hybrid structures and topologies. We now want to put everything together. We want to put those new hybrid structures into the protein, the command. It simply concatenates them into, into a meaningful way. Let me show you what happened. It, it simply created such a, Attenuated structure and topology. Now I opened it again. And I, I'm showing protein. Uh, protein was just empty, let's say, without the ligand bound. Now it simply placed, uh, copied, uh, pro, cro copied ligands into the protein. If you have a different workflow, it, it's perfectly fine. You can just uh, do this uh, yourself. With the, any, any special tricks, right? Uh, Vitas, there is a question about what are the other dummy atoms besides uh, CI? Yeah, that's a good question. Let me, uh, let me show you. So uh, PMX uh, has many rules how to properly construct how to the hybrid uh, uh, structures and topologies. And uh, based on those, we also include other dummies. So let's say uh, there are atoms that are, for example, these uh, HN atoms, right? <laughs> Dummy HN, uh, uh, they are uh, 
atoms bound to nitrogen that are allowed to disappear. It's always a good, uh, a good idea to, uh, I'll show you which atoms those are, uh, not to morph uh, hydrogen that are bound to a, um, I'll mark them, that are bound to a polar, so these would be also uh, become dummies. In principle, it is uh, the same atom, right? Uh, or uh, a matching atom between the two molecules. So in molecule one, nitrogen, <coughs> one hydrogen bound, and two. <coughs> in molecule two, it also hydrogen bound. So in principle, we don't need to disappear and appear via this dummy technology. But it's always a, when when it is a that has a hydrogen that we let them to disappear. This doesn't uh, impose any particular problem for the molecular dynamics. And it is not a big perturbation. Actually, it's a, it doesn't matter if, it's a, if this happens or not via dummies. It's a good idea because in some certain situations, Polar atoms may cause, um, yeah, uh, may, may uh, hydrogen and polar uh, create artificial gaps uh, when you're doing a di uh, direct uh, perturbations. So simply just an empirical rule, which we learned hard way by seeing uh, the simulations. And so, there's a few other questions in the meantime. How does the script deal with legal? different molecular scaffolds or confirmations? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. So the uh, different are not an issue. In a, the, the script will still try to identify a mapping. Maybe that will be uh, not uh, as uh, clean as here. Here, so many atoms are matching. Maybe it will find that out of your 50 atoms, uh, a small subset atoms are matching well then you will end up having very large perturbation and it's it's true it will be challenging but that's that's due to your uh, question that uh, you decided to have two very different ligands uh, in this comparison so the scaffold that's that's the uh, question the confirmation uh, they do not uh, matter so much because let me show you the script that is established uh, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm running, uh, I'm showing just a few options. It has two options. One is uh, MCS, is alignment. You can, uh, they're both enabled by default. You can disable them and uh, uh, one, of, one, one, one of each try out what mapping would come out. But uh, the idea is that the script either relies on the 3D coordinates the uh, different uh, uh, poses of the ligand would matter. So different conformations of the ligand would matter. But it also uses a maximum common substructure graph where the conformations do not matter. So based on those two answers, it will try to uh, find the optimal. And is it possible to align uh, multiple structures on one template? in a single step. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it is, uh, well, you see, it's, it's trivial. You take the template that you have in mind and run the script twice uh, if you have two structures in, in mind. So you have single template, let's say template uh, X, and you compare it to molecule uh, K, you compare it to molecule L, you compare it to molecule M, and you run in a trivial question, right? Uh, it's a question to, to this. I understand that it's uh, maybe sounds uh, like a complicated question, but as a, the solution trivial, run it in a, in, a, in a loop with the same template. Mm -hmm. It creates then uh, the so-called star graph. Uh, yeah. Can you use PMX on 
projector is uh, obtained with amber or maybe other tools from which the solvent that I ask have already removed. Uh, yeah, in principle, you can, uh, if you have the trajectories where uh, you extract the structures in exactly the same way as here, and then continue from there. If, if those trajectories are obtained with amber, let's say, well, if uh, amber force will or, or amber package, I, uh, you would need to convert. We are dealing with Gromox here, so you would need to convert to, to the compatible format for Gromox. But uh, otherwise, there is no objection to, to 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 extract structures from from whatever you have. Mm -hmm. okay, thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, we with the tutorial. And yeah. Cool. We'll take questions uh, as they come. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Th thank you for the questions. That's uh, that's very nice to have it. Uh, yeah. So we stopped where I assembled the systems, and now now we can solve it and prepare them for the simulation. I'll very quickly. So so this is a wrapper script. You you have learned that we have. Um, I'll show what it's outputting. So it, what it's doing, it's putting uh, running several GMX commands. Again, there is no alchemical. Uh, it's nothing pre-ng related. It simply adds uh, the system into puts the system in a box, solves it. Here, so the command is run. Uh, then adds uh, I and I think somewhere here. Uh, so. Does a grom to p and adds ions. Yeah. So uh, very standard. It's called okay. uh, uh, very simple things. Show you what came out. Well, I think I'll need to convert uh, this. Yeah, I'll, I'm just going for the in order to show you what, what happened here, or was I not here? Ah, yeah, uh, I'll just show you, I think, like this, unconverted. So a little bit, Pymal has a bit of a representation issue, but uh, uh, just just for the, very quickly, let's show you a nicer picture of that. Here, protein there, show cartoon, protein, ligand is also there. Uh, what ions also should be there. Uh, yeah, I, they are just colored funny way, but so everything is there. Uh, for alchemy, simply prepare the system and can take the next step. So now for the next step, where am I? We would like simply to add, minimize, minimize the system. Again, this will be just a Gromox command, uh, Grom PP to put and MD run to run the. Uh, energy minimization again we no free energy nothing but let let me start these simulations have a look what's what's happening in the system so i'm just starting it again this is just a wrapper to run from pp once and uh, uh, several times from pp and uh, ah, again i lost myself in this uh, and uh, Now I, I'm, uh, I ran the Grom to P. Now I'm ready to run energy minimization. I'm okay. So now my machine is working harder, I think. Let's have a look. Yes, G is using 500 CPU percent. So it's running on multi cores, on multiple of my lab. Okay. And now we have a little bit of time to have a look what it is doing. So uh, I, I switched to the water. That's energy minimizing right now. Water box. We have two states, state A and state B. Uh, uh, in A, we have our replicas. I go to run one. And I have energy minimization. Oh, you see, the folder is no longer empty. The other folders are still empty. We haven't touched them. Equilibration is empty, transitions is empty, but energy minimization is already running. Okay, so that's exactly what it's doing, and then energy minimization. Uh, let me at least finish uh, one or two runs so that uh, we have some output to have a look what it has done. Uh, 
it, it's a, so the idea that we oh sorry. no it's running too it's affecting my different quality uh, i hope you still hear me uh yes we hear you yeah I, I will run just one energy minimization for the sake of a uh, example and then i'll just stop we can uh, it will be sufficient for us to uh, learn something Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you look at this output and the log is here, <clears throat> I don't even know how many steps I have. Maybe I have very many steps. That will, be, that will take us a while. Uh, yeah, but the idea, so yeah, the idea again, we will energy minimize the system in state A and state B. In this case, it's just a water box. <clears throat> and let me show you what com comes out uh, of, of, of it. Uh, so what so my energy minimization is still running but i can already show you an example of what we will get so it will be just a with the energy minimized structure uh, where all these uh, atom positions uh, are uh, minimized in the potential governed by the Hamiltonian of state A. So state A in the current sense is the one where the uh, chloride atom in this position. Later we'll minimize uh, in exactly the same conditions, but switching to the Hamiltonian in state B. Uh, this way, we will uh, minimize accordingly that, that chloride is in this position, right? That's how we control. Of course, you may ask the question, but how do we achieve this? How do we control it that it is in state A and state B? And uh, this is controlled by the MDP parameter. And that's why I'm returning now to the input files to show you how these MDP parameters are controlling that. So let me show you EML0. There, uh, uh, this is the way, and then going to the free energy control. Uh, ah, here it is. There is a section where I'm uh, showing how it is controlled. It's a, a very small section, but that's how Gramma controls it. So whenever you want to run free energy calculation related things, you have to. format in this case uh, great we have now our output uh, i also have several uh, 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 functions to run uh, to prepare simulations on the cluster so that you don't need to run on the laptop as i did because it takes a while so uh, you, you can just uh, if you're in this running this tutorial you can check how, how these are created but these are standard uh, cluster files uh, class, uh, uh, that that you could create yourself if you have a different uh, uh, environment. G here. I think I also have a Slurm environment prepared to do job scripts. Let me just show you. I think it, it, it did. So I'm being a bit uh, brief on this. Quite standard things. So it creates a job script which you can submit just changes the directory to the required energy directory and runs GMA. use those uh, trajectories to, to further analyze.
prepare the transitions. So I'll execute this and I'll explain what what this one uh, what this command does. I'm executing it, and you can see that first it runs TRG con takes uh, this trajectory that I just generated, right? TRG con, and extracts every uh, uh, every um, <clears throat> I think. Uh, uh, 100 picoseconds, it extracts a snapshot from this trajectory and creates such files, frame uh, 25 grow, 20, 26 grow. Uh, these are cells extracted from the trajectory. If you look at them, let me show you several, seven, uh, 57. These are just two cells from a simulation. Well, it, it extracted a hundred of them, I think, or eight or a hundred. These are just two snapshots. So you see the ligand move from one state to another and the water of course moves. These are regular uh, simulation snapshots extracted and uh, the uh, prepare transitions command also builds a, T a TPR file. So for a transition from state A, B, those uh, TPR, fi uh, TPR files uh, were done exactly with this, uh, with this MDP parameter that they show for. TI of zero. Let me go again to the PNG control where we started at uh, uh, equal init lambda equals zero and we increased delta lambda by small, small increment every time to go from zero to one. So for the back transition, we have a different file which is very similar, the same except for the we start at state one, B. And we go in the reverse direction, minus very small and end up at zero. So it created these TPR files. Now we only need to run each of them. So we need to run uh, 100 uh, MD simulations and calculate uh, uh, them. Or uh, before we calculate the work values, what gamma outputs is the HD lambda file. So I actually also pre-calculated those because we don't want to run now 100 files or 80 files, 80, 80, 80 trajectories now. What we get is uh, are these XVG files. These are called the HT Lambda XVGs. Let me just show you several of them. Uh, they are, uh, yeah, just let's look at one of them. This is just a text file which goes from zero uh, uh, in, in time. The first column is time. It goes from zero to 50. So the transition was done in 50 picoseconds. And the next column is the HD lambda. So this is this uh, value which we want to integrate into uh, to work value. Uh, graphically, these files look as follows. DHDL 80, DHDL 70, just arbitrary as follows, right? We want to integrate this curve to get one single work value, or in this case, two work values. Transition will get 80 of them, and PMX can do that. So if I go to the analysis step, now uh, for each of these transitions, uh, for each of these states, I mm, created 80 transitions. Now I can run analysis, and let's analyze the data. This will be our final uh, calculation. It's running now the analysis, processing the data. What it exactly does that it takes all these ATDHD lambda files and them integrates and also processes them to calculate uh, uh, free energy estimates. So uh, let's have a look at one of the files. I think it creates already output. Right. So what it does, let's have a look graph. And later, let's have a look in more detail. Graphically, it looks like this. So we have snapshots, those are x-axis. For each of them, we had a DHD lambda uh, curve, but this DHD lambda curve was integrated from zero to one in the direction and from one to zero in the reverse direction. And each of these curves before became just one single value. And this one single value is plotted each snapshot is just one work value, bam, 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 bam. And the reverse direction also the blue line now all of these work values on the hand side are summarized as histograms so also i uh, mentioned the uh, left have a meaning that where they overlap 
where they inter where they intersect will be delta g estimate. There are several ways to estimate delta g uh, from from these intersections, uh, either using maximum likelihood estimate or using uh, approximating those histograms as Gaussians, and all of these are summed in the results txt. So the results txt is just the summary of a number. We analyzed in this case 80 trajectories in the forward direction, 80 in the reverse. We used, if you use Crookes Gaussian intersection, <coughs> excuse me, this, uh, uh, this is one way to estimate the, the overlap, the, the intersection region. We approximate the two uh, uh, histograms as Gaussians and say where the two Gaussians intersect, that's where our delta G is. That would be minus 8.8 .8 kilojoules per mole. Uh, is Bennett acceptance ratio. Maybe some of you have heard this. It is uh, saying that what is the maximum likelihood, uh, uh, what uh, uh, parameter of, in, in this case, parameter is delta G, that would explain the rise to these two work distributions. This gives a slightly different uh, interpretation that's uh, very, very similar, uh, minus 885. There is also, maybe you have heard Gerzinski estimator, which says, hey, I only will investigate one directional uh, uh, transition. So this is, what if we do it in the forward direction? But of course, it doesn't have so much information then from the simulation, and it has a less accurate estimation. If we, uh, also, Yersinski can formulate it in the opposite direction. What if I do it only in the reverse direction? Again, a different estimation, and so on and so forth. We can, we can consider more and more of those. Uh, this is a topic of its own. I just wanted to give a flavor, and PMX can provide you with all this information as, as it has done here. Okay, so our has finished. What we have now, uh, let's not forget. So, uh, the delta G's in one direction and in another. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, from, from the transitions in one direction. And, but we have two branches of the thermodynamic cycle. So let's have a look what uh, this, uh, uh, now I'm just summarizing here in the, in the um, we have now uh, transitions in water for one. Uh, can I enlarge? Yes, I can make it larger. This is the summary from all of these transitions that we have. Let's say transition one in water, minus 8.85 and um, uh, several error estimators. You can do it analytically or by boots. Uh, this would be 885. For the transition, 886. For the replica number, 3 is 15. So you see, all of these are very, for the transitions in water, we are converging very quickly, very, very well uh, to, to a very accurate, consistent answer. This, this is then the average of all of them. However, in the ligand is bound to protein, we have slightly more of a variation. 13, here it's minus 10, here it's minus 12. Three different replicas really show some variation. So uh, on average, we about minus 12 kilojoules per mole. Uh, yeah, so um, uncertainty of about one kilojoule per mole. This is, but uh, as I just mentioned, these are just Raw numbers from the separate branches. What we're interested in is delta. Let's just calculate delta. Delta G will be this number. It is minus three. So uh, what it's, it is simply um, subtracting minus water branch of the of the thermodynamic cycle. Three and now, so okay, this is our answer. That's what we calculated from our uh, free energy calculation. Let's go back. So it's minus three. Let's go back. Put it somewhere here. Experimental value. So measure double free energy difference for this edge is minus three point kilojoules per mole. So here we are. We and we got minus. Excuse me. And we got minus three kilojoules per mole. So we are. Our experiment was very successful. We are very close for this particular ligand. But uh, yeah, it, it was a very small change and very well-behaved system. So yeah, very accurately. But as I mentioned, we, we may be that accurate. Yet in this case, it worked well. Okay, so 
at this point I will uh, stop and uh, maybe we have a few more for questions. Yes, thank you, Vitas. Uh, there is a question regarding the fact that you, in your examples, you are using Jupiter Brom 18 and uh, is PMX or and the RAP are they working with Gromox 21 future version? Any particular reason that it's been 2018? Uh, yeah. It's a good question. So, uh, in general, uh, of course, Gromox uh, newer versions are supported, and PMX uh, is compatible with also 20 and uh, 21, and now also the latest version. It's just uh, uh, a note of caution. Uh, um, I, I advise never to jump to the versions uh, because of the uh, pertaining bugs and the uh, that need to be done. So, uh, uh, I, uh, in this case, I want to. Stable, uh, stably running tutorial, which I tested with older. It's compatible, certain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, if there are other questions, please uh, put them in the chat. Okay. Uh, so just to mention also uh, um, just a second that uh, um, so maybe the we had just one hour for the tutorial maybe it was uh, a bit a lot of information for those of you who haven't done it but we are going to well this session is recorded and we'll put it on the web and we'll send you links to the to the recorded video so you can uh, also go through it uh, again at your own play pace. Uh, just uh, to to show in it, uh, does the uh, BioXL, we have also docs.bioxl.eu, where you uh, also find a lot of uh, additional information for all the applications. For, for PMX, for example, there are PMX tutorials on the website that might be useful for you. Uh, so that's uh, all from us for uh, PMX. Thank you, Vitas.